Taken in History, another episode on the North Welsh Coast Walk, day four this is. Um, as you can see I am just leaving Pensorn and Abergali, just walking again along the coast. Uh, we have high tide at the moment, every time we've seen the sea on this trip it's been quite far out and you've seen most of the beach. Well, obviously the tide is in now because it is, well it's not that early but it's like 11 o'clock now so it'll probably start going out soon uh, but today we are heading from Abergali and Pensarn all the way down to Landudno or Clandudno if the Welsh pronounce it that way uh, another very busy, very famous Victorian seaside town one that we me and my family used to visit quite often as kids. We never really went on holiday there. Um, we went on holiday usually down Devon, but we visited on day trips. We always went to Land Under, um, at least a couple of times a year usually. So I can't even remember the last time I've been. It's probably a very long time, probably over 10 years, I'm not sure. Um, but it's a very nice place and that's where we're heading. But we've got a long way to go because it's kind of, it's not at the very end of this land here but it's fairly close <laughs> to the end so we've got to go all the way around there quite daunting at the moment if you've not seen any of the other previous videos go watch them because it's this is a series doing the north west coast walk starting from chester going all the way to bangor so this is day four part four and if you'd watch day three Part three, uh, you will know that my foot was absolutely killing me by the end of day three. Um, update at the moment on the left foot, it's uh, still quite bad, <laughs> it is still hurting quite a lot. But I've found at the moment, like I'm okay at the moment, if I go at a slower pace, um, the pain of it is dulled a bit. So it's going to take me probably longer to get everywhere, but at the moment I am doing okay. So let's head on. Weather at the moment is very cloudy, we have had a little bit of rain, but forecast should be a little bit better. It should clear up in the coming hours. Um, and for the most part we should have a pretty nice clear day because these beach cafes need business and no one's coming when it's like this so we are back on the official path seawall just to the right and Pensarn beach as well just over there uh, but this is the path that we're going on first point of call um, is a place called Clan Doulas that'll be the place that we're passing we're not really going to go into it we're just going to pass the next town but you might be able to see on the hillside just over there I'm not sure if the camera picks it up well just there is an absolutely huge castle like insanely big when you hear it it looks absolutely enormous um, and pronunciation again I don't know how you pronounce it but I'll write it on uh, it's Guy Rich, Guy Rich Castle I'm gonna say well that is definitely wrong um, absolutely huge structure it looks so cool um, but it is a bit deceiving because it's not it looks obviously like a big medieval castle but it actually isn't um, it's what I guess historians would call a fake it's uh, it was built in the Victorian period I guess just to make look like a big castle you know it wasn't built for a big defensive reason you know umpteen hundred years ago um, it was built simply by just like a wealthy really really wealthy <laughs> extremely wealthy um, Elizabethan or well Victorian industrialist called wait what what's look at this for a name Lloyd Hesketh Bamford Hesketh he's got like the name Hesketh twice in his name um, and it was built between 1812 and 1822 so it's still like it's not you know it's still fairly old still um, 200 years but it isn't um, you know a medieval structure or anything but I, that doesn't bother me I think it's that's still really cool one day I don't know if you can go up and visit it but I would love to visit that because it's 
an incredibly impressive bit of Victorian fakery um, and it just looks stunning nestled in that hill there it does say here in the guide that it's the first gothic folly built in Europe so that's pretty cool because there were I know there was a sort of revival at the, in the Victorian times of building kind of these structures and stuff there's one near, near where I live called um, Malkop that looks like an ancient you know like um, defensive tower and it was actually built in like the late 1700s early 1800s I think or something like that it was built in the 1800s probably um, just by a wealthy eccentric dude for it as like a summer house this is the Pensan beach part of Pensan beach which is like protected for wildlife and rare stuff like that rare birds and others but then here we are we've got a bit of a better view hopefully it picks up on the camera again of this huge Victorian castle that I guess was just some bloke's house so he was a well by today's standards a billionaire wasn't he bloody hell gorgeous though that is and there's another little piece of it just there I don't know if that's part of it or not a little tower looks absolutely stunning there so we're going to be heading past it now unfortunately there's this big caravan park in the way so you can't really see it a lot of the time but one day I would love to visit that if you can just come across this again pronunciation is Tycoon Tycoon I don't know um, the historic bathing house for the of the lords of Gurwich Gurwich <laughs> but that's the castle anyway that we've just seen the, that's how you, I don't know how you pronounce it Gurwich 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 whatever bloody Welsh it's so ridiculously impossible to understand uh, but yeah that's part of the estate as well the bathing house I must just come down here have a little soak uh, I don't know what it is now but that's looks like it's probably just a holiday home or something home of someone very nice there this is a nice section of the path I like this um, hopefully this clear weather is going to start coming this way but yeah as you can see it's low tide now the tide is in um, so later on in the afternoon this will all go out and you'll be able to probably walk along here along the beach but beautiful you might be able to just make out that tower there um, whether that is an ancient one or part of that Victorian estate I'm gonna guess it's part of the Victorian estate but still that looks so cool up on the top there and if it isn't part of that estate and it is a very old one that's incredible imagine medieval soldiers being up there and looking out for enemies incoming by sea if not imagine a wealthy victorian gentleman and his wife up there relaxing and looking out over the beautiful views oh, oh there's a train didn't know i was that close to the railway so yes if you do if you come um, to north wales by rail and you're not walking it like um, the railway is very nice because it does go all along the coast so you're going to see a lot of these towns and villages you're going to pass through them um, Conway is the train goes right through there it's absolutely gorgeous uh, or even if you're driving the road does go along here I do remember as a child seeing that big castle driving to Landudno along this road and always wondering like, what the hell is that that's so cool it's huge I'm not sure if you can see but on every one of these like these posts um, that go down into the sea there's some kind of bird I don't know if it's a heron or some some kind of bird just waiting on every one of them all along here there has been um, I'm guessing they're just waiting for the tide to go out so they can start feeding in the, the soft sand and there's all little microscopic sort of animals that they feed on this is mentioned in my guide as well the honeycomb worm reef you can barely read it but you can see the pictures of these here these special interesting kind of reef spot i think the the tide is too far in they must be here when the tide goes out um, i'm 
unfortunately we're not going to be able to see them today but at least we got to see a picture of them another caravan park just heading past and uh, I've just seen a sign that says Colwyn Bay is like three miles away which that isn't that bad I thought it, would, it was actually going to be a lot further than that so I actually feel a bit better about this whole walk out today that's given me a little boost um, because I've still got a good while after Colwyn Bay to get to Land Dudno, but it's sort of Colwyn Bay is like the the last big settlement before Land Dudno, I believe. So that's not too bad. Done a bit of climbing now. Beautiful views on this little bridge here. And the sea out there with the sun shining. We got the railway literally right here next to us, and then above the motorway. All three sections of, well, all three types of travel, literally right next to each other. I do like it when stuff is kind of piled on top of each other like that. So we've got some bikers coming. Well, on our way now to Colwyn Bay, um, I don't know if I can see it. Um, I don't know where anything is and I don't like guessing in case I'm massively wrong and that'll depress me. I don't know if that's landed now. It could be. Um, and that's the big orm. Because there's like these two rocks, there's little orm and big orm. I'm thinking that one might be little orm and this one's big orm, so that would make that landed now. Which seems I've only, you know, I've not long been going. Doesn't look that bad as in far away. I mean, it is far away, but I can deal with that. However, if that's Colwyn Bay and that's the little one and there's another one past that, then that's a bit depressing. But I think we're making good progress at the moment. Okay, so I've had a look at the maps and it's a bit depressing, I think. I think this isn't land, no. This is Ross on Sea, and I think that one there, that big rock, is actually the Little Orm, which should be climbing today, and then past that, which we can't even see, is a land no. and then the Big Orm, past that as well. So, that's crushed my dreams a little bit, because it looked like we were making incredible progress, I was like, oh my god, hell yes. Yeah, I think that's Ross on Sea if I'm looking at the maps properly. This thing here, you can see this like jetty here that's got like some mechanical equipment on. It's like a conveyor belt. And uh, it goes all the way up there into this factory here. So this is mining limestone all here. And then it goes down on this conveyor belt to the jetty and then is loaded on loaded onto boats and ships and then it is shipped out over the British Isles and Europe um, but there's been the, the seas around here are really can be really dangerous because there's been two fairly recent um, accidents one in 2011 a shipwreck it says here in the guide uh, yeah one was wrecked um, off the coast of Lynn in 2011 and then an even bigger vessel was wrecked actually on the jetty in 2012, so just a year later. So this place is still very dangerous, but it's still working, it's still active, which is very cool. You can see some workmen on it. Shame there isn't a boat in, but yeah, it's really cool. You can see the literal factory here, and then it's all just conveyed down to the water. So there it is, that's where it's processed down and comes down on this conveyor belt and goes underneath the road to here. How incredible. To just get it very easily to the sea, loaded on boats and off wherever it needs to go. Genius. Incredibly windy. Yeah, but this, uh, here we are. So this is this is Colwyn Bay. This is not London. No. I was way too hopeful. So Colwyn Bay should be, I guess, here. 
and then oh this one but then further along is ross on sea and then the little home which we'll be climbing that today believe it or not so i best get bloody going Probably a little bit further than it actually looks because yeah I've only got to go down this path and it'll probably only take I don't know not as long as I think I don't think this is a beautiful little section this and uh well I guess this is actually Colwyn Bay isn't it the actual bay itself where the town is I'm not sure either them ones um I don't believe it'll be that one but possibly but I know Ross on Sea is after after Colwyn Bay, but before the Little Orm, and that is definitely the Little Orm. So either way, this section is very enjoyable, beautiful. So obviously it's a cycle path as well, so it'd be excellent to cycle around here. Absolutely stunning now. Looks like we we're making such good progress, but look. We've got to go on a diversion. Not what I wanted. Hopefully it's not. It doesn't add loads to the route. Ugh. Luckily the diversion isn't really much of a diversion at all. It just went inland for like barely any amount of time and then just comes out just on a road further back. But um, the official route is literally right here. So we're basically walking the exact same route which is good and we're getting closer now that doesn't look further away there's something there is something nice about today in that i can see my goal which is the little orm um even though we're going a little bit further after that only a little bit landudno is literally right after that but always having that in view is nice because i can actually see my progress and i think i'm doing okay at the moment Ooh, this is a lovely view here. This is of Colwyn Bay Beach. Now this is a this is a very nice beach. This is probably better than Pristatin or Rail or anywhere like that. Because this is actual soft sand and then you can see where the tide comes in. That is lovely. And it's nice and big and barely anyone on it even now. Absolutely beautiful. To be fair, all around is now. And there's real right over there where I came from yesterday. Bloody hell, I've walked some. What's a seagull doing? Hello. No, I don't think so, mate. I'm trying to nip me munchies. And just along the beach there is this this pier here, or the remains of a pier. This is a Victoria Pier. Opened in 1900. Um, and it was a big event. It had a it had a huge like 2,000 seat pavilion on the end of it. It went right out because this is just the remains of it. But it's been it had like three fires on it or something like each time over the century. Like there's been accidents, big fires on it, and it's been rebuilt each time. But then in 2017, the big storm hit it. Hello, um, and. It basically all collapsed into the sea so that's why there is not that much left of it anymore but it is hoped one day that it shall be rebuilt in some way which would be nice because it's very short isn't it at the moment um, but I bet there's, hopefully there's some pictures of it because I'll put them up there's some great pictures of like 2,000 seat pavilion at the end of it. That sounds really impressive. Look at Colwyn bigging itself up, trying to make out that it's really important. No, good on it. It's a beautiful place. Look at it. Check it out. There's a lot of construction work going on, but it is not it's disturbing the path at the moment, so that is lovely. Absolutely gorgeous, this beach. So we're technically in Ross on Sea now actually, they're right next to each other, Colwyn Bay and Ross on Sea. So that's good. 
We shouldn't be too crazy far away from the little home now. Great view here. And this is Ross on Sea Little Harbour. Very pretty. And a little village, well, town just here. Here we are, Ross on Sea. Very nice little seaside town. Quite busy now that the main road goes through it, but there's the old pier, the old dock. So this here, right by the sea, look at this. A little chapel, and not just a, any old little chapel, the smallest, believed to be the smallest chapel in the British Isles. What a gorgeous little spot. Just go through here. How about that? The smallest chapel in the British Isles. And there's the well, the spring where the water was. What an incredible little place. Little stained glass windows. No one knows how old the present building is, but it's been a place of worship in some form or the other, repaired over centuries and centuries and rebuilt and rebuilt for over 1,500 years. That's St. Trilla, who it's dedicated to, this teeny chapel. In communion, communion is still held in here, which is pretty incredible. Here we go, heading out of Ross on Sea now and heading to this little orm it is deceptively known as, uh, just because past it, in past land, I know there is a bigger one called Big, um, called, is it Bigger Orm? Big orm? <laughs> little Orm and Big Orm, I think so. So that is where we're heading to next. Uh, past this next village uh, which I don't really have any interest in it's just going straight past it and we should be heading for the little home and I believe we're going to be climbing it which oof. I mean I've still got a fair bit of energy like it's it's 20 to 4 in the afternoon um, but we'll see it's probably it's a little bit a while yet until I get there so We'll see how we go, but after that, after climbing the little arm and getting over it, um, we should be able to see Landed now from the top, and it's, that is basically the next stop straight after climbing over the little arm. We'll be heading down into Landed now, where day four ends. So surprisingly. So far, as of now, I've been going for quite a few hours. Um, I've been going very, I've been going slower than I have been. I've been going pretty steady, but I, I think I've been stopping less, and the the pace I've set is okay. It's okay, and my foot is not hurting. It's hurting, but it's like a bearable pain. Like yesterday, by the end of yesterday, it was like absolutely killing me. And when I started today, I was like, oh god, it's going to kill me like the whole day. But I've sort of slowed down and I've got it to a dull ache, which is bearable. So hopefully it stays that way. To the little home we go. Getting very close to it now, here it is. Uh, I'm hoping maybe we can just go around it. Maybe the guide will take us just around rather than over because I love climbing hills but after walking for four days from Chester you're like oh that doesn't look fun anymore <laughs> it looks bloody huge and that's the little one little arm um, kidding me right Ooh, feels like this cold is like never ends but it gets you right close to the little arm um, um, so I've got to go to the end of this cold is apparently 
and then there should be a path on the left with some steps that leads up to the path up there. So we're doing it. Here we go. Steps. Thank God. And there's my little sign. Wales Coast Path. Hell yes. Let's do it. Oh, this is what I'm talking about. Look at this. This is gorgeous. Oh, when you're here, it's so... I mean, it looks great from far away, but... Oh, this is stunning. It's pretty quiet as well on here. Great little information board there. Um, something very cool and interesting happened here. I had no idea about I'll just paraphrase what the board said. In the... The, the Welsh is, Wales' is first ever printing press was kind of developed here, if you want to... I mean, you could argue about printing press, but, you know, uh, basically in the 1580s, I believe it said. Um, this was uh, during Elizabeth I's rule. Um, being Catholic was uh, outlawed and illegal and everything, all the rest, you couldn't practice it. But uh, there was a Catholic kind of like newspaper, a pamphlet sort of thing that was being made here at Little Orm uh, because the guy who owned the land where Little Orm was on was a staunch Catholic and he let um, a group of like priests uh, use the caves around here in Little Orm and in these caves they were writing these pamphlets and copying them and all the rest of it. So, you know, like a very early printing press, uh, which would then be dispatched all over, uh, all about the Catholic faith. And they were eventually discovered, discovered by someone who had allegiance to Elizabeth I. But before they could be like prosecuted or anything, they had fled with all the equipment and everything that they had um, out the caves. It says the caves are now inaccessible, which is a shame. But I'm going to have to look into that more because that sounds like such a cool little story. What a stunning little area. Little Orm is. It's sheer cliffs here. I think they said limestone as well was mined here. Uh, not for that long though, I think for a period of 30, 40 years. But these are fantastic hills. Oh, I think that might be the hill up to the top. Oh dear. Oh, this is incredible. Look at this path. Teeny little path that goes right along the edge. So you've got to be careful. Luckily, it's very calm at the moment, wind-wise and everything. So it is safe-ish. Wow. Look at all this. It's a sudden drop. Beautiful though. Right, let's get to the top of this little one. I'm just off the path now, I'm just exploring, just having a good time. Oof. This is incredible. I think I've got to be a bit more careful than I usually am, or just be a bit more wary. Uh, just because how heavy everything is on me, like how much I'm carrying, that um, I don't feel quite as confident doing any crazy, you know, I don't feel quite as confident being really close to edges of things, just because my balance isn't as perfect as it usually is, is um, if, you know, as if I've got a, a normal bag with me. But here we are, we've reached the top of this little one. Look at that. A little bay down there. I think this might be Angel Bay, I think it might be called. Down here. But you can imagine, there are little caves and stuff. Could be where all the them priests were doing the printing press stuff. But that's stunning, that is. incredible place just to chill out 
and have a rest, have a sandwich just up here right on the edge safely enough because you're on these absolutely gorgeous I don't want to move now but I'm going to have to start or else I'll never get to London now I think I'm going to be heading up there and along the top Whew. just zoomed in the GoPro you're probably still not going to be able to see anything but no joke no word of a lie I've just seen a seal on those rocks I think they might actually still be there you can hear them yeah the seals there wow that's incredible I just I've literally just heard one roar and that's why I was like what the hell I don't know if they show up on the camera at all because I can only just see them with my eyes um, they kind of blend into the rock but oh my, there are actual seals here wild fucking seals that's mad that's amazing you could literally you could get down to this little cove as well angel cove I believe but I can't believe it I've just seen some seals so that was a beautiful little detour on that rock, you get a great view and you can maybe even see seals but now I've got to climb this oh god and it's way steeper than it looks on the camera this is going to be a bitch in this heat now some remains of the quarrying equipment here and then look at this, we got to the top gorgeous the path is actually telling me to go this way, so I'm not actually going to go round to the edge, but I'm going to check that out because I'm sure there'll be a lovely view just there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go round that way and we'll see where it leads us. This must be where they did quarry in, I think, because it's so flat, isn't it? So they're probably all the machinery was up here, that's why that's there. Still, the only piece left of it. absolutely gorgeous so this side just gives you an uh, absolute perfect view of everywhere I've come so I was all the way over there and this is, I've walked this entire thing and a good chunk of that was today I can see where Rill is, Rill is about there so Abigali is probably about there-ish so that's how far I've walked today. Amazing. Right, let's go finish a little warm and then we should be descending into land, don't know where today ends and I don't know, maybe I'm being cocky and I'm going to regret this, but I'm feeling okay to think that I'm somewhat close-ish to the end, like I'm most of the way up here now. I'm just gonna get round it and then descend into London now. So today has been fantastic. This has been one of the highlights absolutely of the trip so far. Little Orm I recommend just coming out here anyway you could go to Ross on Sea which is just down there uh, which is a very nice little seaside town um, you know, lots of nice shops and a lot of cafes, restaurants, all the rest. Um, have a look around there, there's some interesting little historical things. Um, I'll definitely be back there because there's like a historic walk thing that takes you around all the little, you know, points of interest. So I'll do that one day. Uh, and then you can have a trek up here. Um, and that would be absolutely beautiful if you've got a nice day. But any time of the year, imagine it says said on one of the boards that um, the seals it says you may see 
from seals uh, but they're most common in like January so winter time so I mean it'd be blisteringly cold up here I imagine with the wind but if you've wrapped up properly got a balaclava on and everything um, you could probably see tons of seals which would be amazing very out of breath at the moment because I've gone off the path because the path is leading me down there now and going down so off a little arm so the official pathway doesn't actually take you to the top of Little Orm. Now, I reckon that's probably the top where them little stones are. But I was like, I don't want to go down here. I do want to see land and know from, from up here. I don't just want to walk down into it. So I've just climbed up here. I've dropped my bag and stashed it away and climbed up this. And I mean, the view is obviously insane from up here, but look at this. Those, that is Snowdonia, the mountain range in Wales, Mount Snowdon, everyone knows. I don't know if any of those are Mount Snowdon. Um, if so, possibly that one or that one, but I don't, I don't know. They're probably not, I might be further in, but that is Snowdonia, the mountain range. Absolutely gorgeous. And hopefully up here, I'm going to be able to see the land or no, or clan or no. Let's see. You bet your ass we can. Woo! Oh shit. It's so windy. But well, look at that. This is, so this is the top. I've just sneaked it to the top. And wow. Hopefully you can hear me. But yeah, God, I'm not far from Landerno at all. I'm not far from the end. That's okay. This is Landerno, or Clandenno. Oh, look at the over there. That is gorgeous. So, this is where we're going to end today, or down there. And then that is the big orm. So this is little orm, and that is the big one. Absolutely stunning, and we're going to go around the big orm tomorrow and go down into Conway where there's a massive castle. Absolutely stunning. What a place to end today. Here's the little, little orm, and we are now descending into Landudno, thank god. And yeah, there's the big one which we will do tomorrow. So here we are in Landerno or Clandonno. Uh just on the promenade now, absolutely humongous promenade as you can see. You've got the pier that going out here. Huge pier. Um well, yes, Landerno is a well. It's a big place, and it's also, I think, it's probably the best surviving kind of Victorian seaside resort. Uh, it's still got that vibe to it. All the buildings are kind of oldy. Um, when we get further down as well, close to the front, we'll see more in the next part, though. Uh, and including the pier, the pier obviously, and there's like a huge hotel there that's like super, you know, Victorian. Um, so it's still got those vibes to it and um, they do like Victorian weekends once a year I think it's like a big event that's what we as a family used to come to the Victorian weekend um, when there's you know people like dressing up is, is in their clothing there's events on like there's uh, all the Victorian kind of trams and buses are all out and bring all the vehicles out and everything like that there's all sorts you know punch and judy shows all the rest of it um the whole place kind of transforms for the victorian weekend which i think they still do you'd hope so because they used to do it we used to come every year for it as kids but yes we are in london now where this day section ends so i'm gonna end it here because i'll just get to the hotel We'll speak more about Landed Note in the next part. So, from that was the walk today from 
Upper Galley to Vandana. So see you in the next one and like and subscribe and all that good stuff as always and yeah, see you later. Bye.